Board. And everybody. All right. Welcome to another Sunday edition of our lovely coaching call where we dive in on pretty much everything in between the fitness and the food, right? It's everything that's in between these two ears, what's inside your head. Um, kind of, I truly believe, and I, I think it's quite evident that my teachings and my branding and everything behind it says this is the most important time that we have um, above everything, above, like we, we, we always say, oh, man, I, I, I made, made it to the gym four days this week. Yes, rock on. And then you'll have the one week where you're like, man, I only did two workouts. And then we hit ourselves over the head for it and we get so upset and all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, I always stress it's only four hours of the week, right? And this is why the, men, the mental side of things is key here leading into this topic where it's shoot first, aim second. Now, I want you guys to take a moment and really bring that into bring that into everything that you you've done, you are who you are, and think about what it means to you when you hear that. Because the problem that I see, um, whether it's in fitness, in health, in nutrition, in your career, job conversations, I see people asking questions about tiny little details that doesn't give like that does not matter. Right? It's like, well, if that's not right, I'm probably not going to do it. Oh man, it's snowing outside. I don't think I'm going to walk to my car and go to the gym. All this kind of stuff, right? All these little tiny details that stop you from truly hitting your potential. And what it boils down to is more people do that than the ones who don't, okay? Or else gyms will be packed, or else educational seminars will be packed. There's more people that choose to do nothing over something because they're aiming. They're trying to find the best, quickest, easiest possible way to the end target without going through any resistance. And that's a problem. And the, the issue with that is you can't be perfect. There's not one perfect thing that is made for you. Amy moves a different way, not one perfect squat for her. I can't tell her what it is, but she can find it out, right? If you guys keep asking me, well, what's the best, perfect, most perfect, perfect way? I'm going to tell you it's the best way that you most perfect, perfectly can squat, right? You have to try it and figure out what you're actually doing before you can say if it's good or not. And I think the biggest question I get is probably around nutrition and how many calories I'm supposed to eat. Hey, Corey, how many calories should I eat? I'm like, I don't know. What the fuck do I know? All I know is that you can overeat, and it's really easy to figure that out, but it's really hard to figure that out when you're eating really delicious things. So if you can make a chicken breast taste delicious like pizza, I'm in, because I can't overeat a chicken breast, but I can eat a whole pizza, right? All that kind of stuff. You guys are asking me what the perfect number is. Like, what should I? I'm telling you to start somewhere. Put a number on the board, shoot at it, and see if it works. Try it for a week or two and see if results start happening. And I don't mean results physically, because physical results take longer than a week or two to start showing up. I mean, how do you feel? Truly connect inside of you. How do you feel? So we're aiming at this number, okay? We're going to see it. Oh, it's 1,600, 1,600, 1,600. Okay, never. I can't get there. It's always 1,200. Well, it's because you're always aiming. Just, just put that up there as a goal. And just try to collect the information that helps you get to it, right? Because that's action taking. You're collecting the information. Okay, well, if I eat um, a handful of nuts, okay, that's like 250 calories. Oh, that's really good. But if I eat a handful of broccoli, well, that's 20 calories. But they're the same size. They're both in a hand. Like, do you know what I mean? you got to learn this bit of information. And that's action taking for you to be able to get to your goal instead of just sitting there and aiming, wondering, well, what should I eat? What should I do? All that kind of stuff, right? Whoa. Okay. You saw that? That's like pokeroo right there. So guys, what I'm trying to say is take a stab, let's pick a number and let's start somewhere. Then we need to figure, 
Pokeroo. Jeez. Then we need to figure out if it makes you feel good inside first. If it makes you feel good, it lights your eyes up, it wakes you up, you're, you're energized, you're all that. That's step number one. Then you know that you, you took a good shot. But if it's not fully starting to give results three weeks down the road, okay, then we got to just readjust and shoot again. But you need to have fun with this along the way. If you're always stressing about the end goal, in a year from now, I need to be in my wedding dress, or in a year from now, I got to be on that beach, or in a year from now, I'm going to tell you, if you're sitting here thinking a year from now and you're missing everything in between, you're never going to get to that year as happy as you possibly could because you're always aiming for that end goal. But what are we doing on the daily basis to get to that end goal, right? I saw something, I tried to share it, and I'm going to pull it up. It's on Instagram, okay? So we follow this account called Strength, Strength Sensei. So what that is, um, it's basically the account after um, Polquin, like Charles Polquin. He died, but um, they've carried on his account. So it says, to live an uncommon life, one needs to learn uncommon disciplines. Guys, being in shape is uncommon. Right? So I'm looking around at the screens. When you see my eyes moving, I'm looking around at the screens, looking for your reactions and see what your brain's doing because I can see it on your faces and stuff like that. Literally, I want you guys to be so aware of being in shape is super uncommon. It's not to say that you won't walk down the street and see in shape people because you will. Yes, you will. But the majority of people are actually out of shape. And whether they're large, small, big, tall, whatever it may be, you can still be out of shape at any state that you're in. So if we truly strive to be in shape, if that's our goal, we have to learn to do things that are uncommon because that's what it is. It is uncommon. I want you guys to understand that and know that, that you have to take chances. You have to take leaps of faith and you have to trust in someone to start you somewhere and not always doubt what they're saying and not always doubt what you're saying and what you're thinking. If you continuously doubt, you will continuously miss the mark. And the marks put out by hundred different things in your life. You could have the, the target out there based on, oh, my kids, I really want to live well for my kids. You could have it, oh, I really want to increase the way I look, to increase confidence. Oh, I really want this dress to fit. You have, you have so many targets that you put in front of you. How do you know what to aim at first without shooting? Like, why not just try to shoot one and then let's go for it, right? So that's, that's the mentality that I need you guys to, to, to grab. I want you guys to grab it by the horns and be like, because I need to do things that I don't normally do to get to what I want that isn't normally in my life. If you choose to do the same things over and over again, you will get the same result, okay? So if you're used to being out of shape, tired, all that kind of stuff, complaining, upset, and you choose to like continue to do that stuff and do the same things and you're not going outside your comfort zone, you're not joining uh, you know, a, a group, or you're not, you, know, you don't come in the inner circle like you guys are in right now. Those people that aren't doing these things will continue to get the same results and they're all around you. And it's, it's almost like it's your duty to give them an opening and an opportunity to say, hey man, you're just aiming. And I challenge you to think of someone in your life that's close to you that just aims all the friggin' time. It's annoying as hell because it's easy to point them out because they are so annoying. It's like, man, will you just do something? It's like you walk around the room and you do nothing all day long. You just walk around in circles. How many times have you guys said that or heard that, right? Walk around and just do nothing. I got nothing done today. Well, it's because the people are always aiming. They actually don't want to do anything. We got to get out of that mindset. We got to, you know, collect our thoughts and collect our actions and put them towards good use. And if you're doing something, I truly think something is better than nothing as long as it's progressive. If it's something that's regressive and it's going to take you back and the people that are around you back, question it. Because what's going to happen is the people that are actually aware of that will start again to leave you. And I've said this before, they will leave you. They will leave you there alone because they don't want to be in that energy field. If someone is in the room that has the wrong energy, I can feel it right away. And if that person is me, I can feel it right away. And I have to get myself out of that. And we're all vulnerable to it. We're not immune to it. 
No, not one of us, not any of us. There is not one person. No one's perfect. Just understand that. But this is what we have to do, guys. We have to start doing things that are not common to our lifestyle. When Carrie changed her lifestyle, she changed everything. Now she comes in the mornings without complaint. She goes at nighttime with Ryan and shows up the next morning. She slips on ice, says, fuck it, I'm still going. I had to put that in there, right? Regular occurrences like that, injuries like that, or pains like that could easily derail someone from going the next day. But that doesn't get you closer. It doesn't get you moving again. When we know that if we just keep moving forward one step at a time, whether we're 40% at the workout or we're 100, or 40% on a task at work or we're 100, at least we're 40% to 100% better or closer, right? If you do the math of 1% every single day for a year, that's a lot of percent by the end of the year, guys. But yet we want it all now. We want that impl implement implementation now in our lives. We want it to happen next week. But I guarantee you the people that are saying, hey, I want to lose 10 pounds by Saturday, just keep aiming. They keep aiming. Not one of them are shooting. Not one. When I started the business, my business model was invite a shit ton of people, whether I piss them off or not, but if I sat here wondering who I should invite, qualifying my leads, going through the list, well, who's warm lead, who's a cold lead, do I know that person, what's my conversation entry point, you think I would have got to where I am today if I sat there with list after list after list trying to cultivate it? Honestly, I'm, I'm going to say this right now. We have tons of lists with the gym, and it was brought up the other day um, just with Ryan, Allison, and I. So myself and Allison, we went over it, and we kind of battled back and forth on are they good, are they bad, are they worth it, are they not? There's a lot of work going in, and I value how much time that it takes to get these lists together. And I'm picking through them, being like, oh, I just haven't talked to that person in a long time. And it's like, okay, can I connect with that person to say, well, I'm just going to try. If I look through that list and just go up and down the list and I fall habit to this, I'm like, oh, I need an entry point. I need an entry point. I, need an entry. I message four people. But last Friday I had the list and I went through the list of people who are pass holders that haven't been in in a while. So we did a four week drill down who hasn't been in in four weeks for pass holders, not members. So members of the gym. And I literally no, I don't kid you. I took a pre-workout to do this because I wanted to be fired up and just get shit done. So I drank my pre-workout and I hammered off 47 messages, 47 messages to people, single messages, and then the replies and stuff like that. I probably did 120 text messages within two hours. Just sitting in the gym. It was empty. It was, it was Friday afternoon. And I'm just like hammer fisting. My thumbs were sore. I was like, oh man, I got to roll my shoulders, all that kind of stuff because I just said, fuck it. I'm just going to do it. Right. And this is my, this is me telling you that they can, you can get bogged down if you just aim and wonder what's the best way, what's the best list, what's the best. Okay. We've got a one week check in a three week check in a four. No, I'm sorry. One week, a four week, a three month, a six month and a one year check in. Does that work? I don't know. Someone told me it did, but maybe it doesn't. Right. It's like, I'm changing, I, I'm changing the way I look at things and efficiency. And it's like, well, I want to grow the gym. I want more people to go to the gym. I want more, I want to help more people. Now I'm literally messaging people and just having conversations with them. That's it. They may think it's drive driven from, I want them in the gym, but that's up to them to think that. And if they think that it works, then that's a benefit to me. But I truly sending these messages being like, Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, you have a 10 pass. That's great. You still haven't used it. I'm not a charitable donation, so I can't give you a charitable receipt for it. Do you want to commit? So that's where the conversation sometimes leads. Sometimes it was like I was talking with a person on last night and she was talking about sleep training her kids. And then I'm like, no, I did that. And that's where we left it. And I said, follow up. Give me, you know, let me know how the sleep training goes. That was it. But these are, these are just me shooting right? And I'm going to tell you when I shoot results happen. When I sit there and go through the lists and pull them up and be like, Oh, how do I talk to, I don't know that person very well. Bless you, Sabrina. I literally don't get anything done. Amy, your first call tonight. This is awesome. I unmuted you. You can talk if you, I don't know what you did. Your mic's gone. I don't know. There you're there. You are now. Nice. <laughs> 
I want to just your your um, career, your your choice of work has um, brought a topic to me with you. If you were to shoot first by getting stuff down, by writing your books and stuff, how much more productive is that than sitting there being like, "Well, I wonder this, I wonder that, I wonder I'm going to plan, 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 plan." You get stuck planning the whole time, and you never write a book. That's right. So uh, I was actually told uh, recently I'm taking a course building on my Gallup Strength Strength Finders by Clifton. Yep. And on one of my strength, uh, my top five is if I sit there and stare at a blank blinking cursor, I won't ever write. <laughs> so she said to get up and move, and so I've been getting up and moving, and it's been working pretty well. So yeah, if I just sit there and think about everything about the marketing, about how many people are going to buy that or do this, then I'll never write. But let's narrow it down. I want to really focus in on what you do then and mm -hmm. in relation to that. You write books. Yes. The publisher knows how to sell them. Yes. So as, as a writer, why, like, why, it doesn't serve you to think about how to sell your book. Well, there is some level of marketing we have to do. Sure. Have, yeah. But you can't market an unwritten book. No. And if you can... Tell me, because I'll write an unwritten book and market the shit out of it and figure it out. As yeah, you know, it, yeah. I mean, like, it's impossible, right? So it's like, okay, if we think about all that stuff down the line, and this is perfect for what we're talking about, you'll never get to the end. Right. And then you're sitting there, and I know your choice, you, you love it, and I love your stories, and you put them out there to Facebook world and that kind of stuff, because that's where I read them, and that's where I've gathered some information about you. Ooh, okay. <laughs> and you put it there and you're like coming to crunch time. You're like, Oh shit. Right. You're like, Oh no, I got to write this book. Oh, the deadline. Oh, da, 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 da. but I guarantee you, if you look back and you reflect on what you were going through and writing down what you actually, what was holding you up, mm -hmm. then you won't do that again. No, it gets better every time. For sure. Uh, how many, my, how many books have you written? Um, I'm working on number 24. It's incredible. Yeah. I wrote five books. I think my best year I wrote five books. Um, so yeah, I mean, it used to take me like six months to write a book. I can write a book in a month now. Which is so. awesome. And just think yeah. like all that value that you're writing and all that, like your readers and the publishers and that product that's now coming out and what you're delivering back home by shooting first, aiming second. Yeah. What you bring home now, that efficiency just increased your, your overall performance tenfold. Yeah. And I, I find my emotions definitely held me back too. So I needed an outlet. So, and, and that's a big thing too, guys. Having all work, no play, make Homer go something, something. If anybody's seen the Homer Simpson episode, right? Yeah. It's so true. We need that outlet to go along with this stuff because uh, I've talked about in the past calls, if we don't have a, a time slot for creativity, and creativity can be anything that you guys think about. Like, it's not just like, hey, that's creative, like I'm gonna make a, a painting. But creativity could be what you're doing to your body, right? With uh, working out and changing your shape and all that kind of stuff. You're getting creative. Like I used to change and do workouts according to how I wanted my body to look and how I wanted to feel and all that kind of stuff. But it can be anything. If you block out those times, then what you're really doing back here, your main bread and butter flourishes because you're not sitting there thinking and stewing and going over it and being like, Oh, it needed to be perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I, I'm listening to a podcast and it's really cool. Um, it's called entrepreneurs on fire and it's just on Spotify, John Lee Dumas. And that's where the miracle, uh, sorry, the hundred day book that you saw me post the other day, the journal, um, comes from, he's the author of that. Literally one of the person thing on the set that talked about branding and websites and stuff. We're always worried about the aesthetics of what we look like from a branding perspective as an entrepreneur. And this goes for everybody, just physical appearance even. We're worried about what we look like to others, that we consistently tweak those things, but yet the others, those people that we worry about, all they're waiting for is what we can deliver and value. But the look of what we deliver isn't the value piece, that's for ourselves, right? But what we write and what we do and what we're special at and what the skills that we possess and can deliver to the world is truly what those people are waiting for. That's what your tribe wants. That's what your people that follow you want. But if we're so stuck up on the details of what our website looks like, what our cover page looks like, 
what you know what our clothing choices are what our makeup looks like what all this stuff looks like we'll never deliver our full potential because we're wasting so much time trying to get all those things right and that again is a perfect example of how we're aiming to please others yet we're not shooting to deliver something to ourselves. so I'm pretty passionate about this one. You can hear it. I'm pretty fired up. Um, I'm going on a podcast this Wednesday with uh, two trainers. Um, Hawk, he just joined us and he shut down his gym, but he still has um, Ivy League mindset. So that's the account on Instagram. So I'm going to be on that podcast. And this is like, it's strange how this is all coming too, because I've been posting some stuff on Instagram, just some of my thought processes and the mindset. I don't know if you guys have been seeing it on stories and a little bit of fun stuff in there too. But I'm really trying to not show many workouts anymore because I'm going to be honest with you. Everybody knows we do workouts, right? Social media has gone to who's working out. What does it look like? Blah, blah, blah. It's so freaking boring. And literally it's four hours. It's four hours of a, of, a, of a work week or a whole week. And it's 99% of the content that you see on these damn social medias when you're part of a gym because the algorithms and everything just pumps your feeds and throws it. You guys are all seeing it if you start liking that stuff. I want to be different. And I'm going to go on this podcast that's all about mindset. And these two guys are in the same zone as me. And now the energy is coming together. They're coming to the gym Wednesday night. We're going to be there. We're going to be doing a podcast on that kind of stuff. They're going to ask me some questions. It's going to be like a Joe Rogan flow but it's really cool because we're just shooting it. We're just going to go and do it. Who cares what happens when it comes out to it, but we're going to bring value to the listeners because it's coming from experiences, right? We're talking about experiences that we've gone through. We're talking about what our personal mindsets are. We're not talking about opinion, what we think of something else, right? Because honestly, opinions are great, but let's try to, let's try to bring some facts to it because what I think of something and what is known of that thing are two different things, right? Most people don't care what person thinks of it. So we really want to give you straight, honest answers. It's all coming together and we're just going to throw it out there. All right? We've got nothing fancy. I don't even know if they can even put it up yet because they haven't figured that stuff out yet, but we're shooting it. We're going to get that content. And it's just cool. This stuff is coming down the pipeline. Ryan and I are literally shooting at the hip with a protein program, right? We're going to launch our own protein. How cool is that? I think it's pretty fucking cool. And it's going to have a dinosaur on the label. I don't have any protein containers, but I'm telling you, the labels on protein powders, they're boring. They're boring. They don't make me open that container and pour the protein out. I don't know about you guys, unless you're, you know, really habitual with that kind of stuff. But my protein sits here for a long time. I can have it for months because it doesn't scream to me like, hey, this is good, let's do this. But we're gonna have a dinosaur on the label. It's gonna be funny, it's gonna say something cool. And literally, it's already in the works. We've already paid the money. I got the designer emailing me now. So if we, aim, if we, if we were aiming, guys, I'm gonna use this example, we'd be sitting here like, how are we gonna compete with Costco? Everyone buys Costco, it's on sale. How we compete with Herx? Well, you guys all get 20% off at Herx Nutrition. Well, I've just noticed that we can come in at a price point without any discounts at Herx price points with the discount. Nothing against his business, but I'm sending you guys there to get something that I can now provide and you can buy it when you want it, right? There's no subscription. There's none of that shit. You just, hey, I need protein. Rycor, right? And we just deliver. That's the name, by the way. Um, but yeah, so like, these are things that we're just shooting and Ryan and I looked at each other and we're like, okay, so if we don't sell, we bought 50, uh, two pound tubs. So a hundred pounds of protein, like guys, we're getting a hundred pounds of protein. Like that's pretty cool. And if we sell 20 pounds, we both have 40 pounds of protein. How can you go wrong with 40 pounds of protein? We'll bake things. We'll do things. We'll give it away. Like, what are we out? 700 bucks, what's that, right? Over the long term, maybe it sells, maybe it doesn't, but at least we're trying, at least we're doing something. So this is the mentality that I want you guys to adopt. 
And it doesn't mean you have to spend money. It doesn't mean all that kind of stuff. This is just business. We love business. We like bringing more value to you guys. If we can bring something at a good price point and it tastes good and it's got our stamp of approval, I'm all good with it, all for it. So we just need to be more adventurous. Get outside your circle, comfort zones. This circle, I'm gonna try to draw around my face. Okay, see that? The only thing that happens in there are a lot of thoughts. Not always good ones. Sometimes they're scary. Sometimes I think about my kids having a fever. So I'm like, not a lot of good things happen in here if you don't step outside to get different perspectives. Okay? So I really challenge yourself. There's no homework for this week other than the fact that I really want you guys to shoot first. I don't know if I could do 10 push-ups, Corey, for my feet. Well, how the f are you going to figure it out? Right? You just got to do it. Just have to do it. Nike has the greatest slogan on earth. Easily one of the greatest slogans on earth. You can go anywhere in the world in any language and you know what it means. You just look at the label and you're already thinking it. I want you guys to think like that. Push yourselves outside your comfort zone. Write six books in a year. Write seven, Amy. Go for it. Do more. Just do more. We all have the same amount of time in the day. But there's way more successful people out there that are doing way more stuff. They've just figured it out. They've got out of their own way to be able to go outside their comfort zone. The second you're doubting yourself, that's what you got to do. Whatever it is, do it. Okay? I challenge you guys that. If you doubt yourself this week, next week, and next month on anything, go and do it. Unless it's morally appropriate. Then you can choose. We cool? Good call, Amy. First call. Yep. Look at that. Got you on it already. <laughs> Patricia, I like that. I'm learning about Trish. Patricia. Nice. Okay, guys. Anybody have anything to add? Oh, I'm going to look at the chats. Yes, Carrie. <laughs> Tracy goes, Rycor. Seriously? Hey, Tracy, that was your... You came up with something like that. So, hey. Yes, seriously. All right, guys. That's it from me. I'm going to say good night. You guys can post in the inner circle more. Just your thoughts. Tell us about your successes. Post shit you're doing outside of the gym. Just honestly, you guys can flood that so you don't flood the news feeds of others. And then we'll build up some serious steam and some pressure and then explode to the world. All this greatness that we're doing. Cool? Nod for yes. Yes means go. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Hope you have a great evening. Get some rest. The good week ahead. Going to be busy.